A struggle that some students have with line integrals is to figure out what's the easiest method to use in order to calculate a line integral. So let us take a look at these three examples here. We have a different vector field in each, and we have a different curve that's moving through the vector field, and we want to calculate the line integral of each. So here's just some hints about how to decide which method to use. Okay, so in the class that I teach, we teach three methods. So we have the uh, f of r of t dot dr prime of t dt method, which is kind of like the standard method that works all the time. Then we have Green's theorem, and then we have the fundamental theorem of line integrals. So I'll show you how to make the decisions of which one to use as quick as possible. All right, now I want to take a look at each of these line integrals and look at the um, relationship between the partial of F2 with respect to X versus the partial of F1 with respect to Y. Now, if those two items are equal, if these two functions are equal, that means that the vector field is path independent, okay? And if we can determine which one of these is path independent, then we can use the fundamental theorem of line integrals on that. So let's test path independent vector field first. So the partial of F2 with respect to X here is one, and the partial of F1 with respect to Y is minus one. So this is not path independent. And I'm going to use PI for path independent. Now I come over to this one. I'm going to take the partial of F2 with respect to X. And then the partial of F1 with respect to Y. And I get the partial of F2 with respect to X is 0. The partial of F1 with respect to Y is 0. So this one is path independent. Okay, That means we can use the fundamental theorem of line integrals on this one. So I'm going to put the fundamental theorem here just to remind me of which method I'm going to use. I guess I'll spell that out. I don't know if that's spelled right. I'm not going to worry about it right now. <laughs> I don't think it is. And right, this last one, I'm going to do the partial of F2 with respect to X and the partial of F1 with respect to Y. Partial of F2 with respect to X is 1. Partial of F1 with respect to Y is 2Y, so this is also not path independent. Okay, so the only one we can use a fundamental theorem on right now is the middle one. Now the next one, uh, since we can use that the DT method on anything, what we're trying to do now is figure out if we can use Green's theorem on any of these. So when you're going to talk about Green's theorem, you actually have to talk about how C behaves. So I'm going to draw a picture of C in the two cases that I have left. And this guy, this is a line segment that goes from 0, 0 to 1, 1. From 0, 0 to 1, 1, moving this way. So draw a really nice graph of it. Now Green's theorem says that the parameterized curve has to be Simple, piecewise, smooth, closed curve. I believe that's that takes into account everything. And also, as you're moving along the path from one point to another, you have to be moving in such a way that the interior of the closed curve is to your left. Well, first of all, this isn't even closed. So I can't use Green's theorem. So this tells me I can't use the fundamental theorem. This tells me I can't use Green's theorem. So the only method I have is the one that can be described as if I want the line integral f dot dr, that's going to equal to the line integral over from a to b of f of r of t dot r prime of t dt. And A and B is the interval for DT that creates the parameterized curve. R of T is the vector form of the parameterized curve. And R prime of T is the, the velocity version of R of T. So here, this is the method we're going to use. We're going to use a fundamental theorem on this guy. And last but not least, I'm going to draw the piecewise smooth curve here, or whatever it is. 
It says it's counterclockwise path around the perimeter of a rectangle where x goes from 0 to 2, <coughs> excuse me, and y goes from 0 to 3. So x goes from 0 to 2, y goes from 0 to 3. So I have create this rectangle that looks like this. I'm moving counterclockwise around the edge. And so you can see that I have a simple piecewise smooth closed curve. And as I walk in this direction, if you imagine yourself literally walking along these lines in that direction, the interior here would be to your left. And that's what Green's Theorem says. So here I'm going to use Green's Theorem. So to me, this is the hardest part of, of doing line integrals. Once you decide which theorem to use or which method to use, then find, you know, finding the line integral isn't so bad. But here's three ways of looking at how to determine which method. Now, the next three videos, I'm going to show the solution to each one of these line integrals.